Good afternoon to some of you. Good evening to some of you. Good night. Alors bonjour à tous. Pour certains, c'est bon. Pardon, on est en France. And uh, the venerable Elizabeth, thank you so much for um, the taking such an initiative to first of all to be involved in establishing many of the, the centers like Nalanda, Vajrayogini, Nankala Chakra and so forth. And uh, this great service to the, the Dharma and sentient beings, I really appreciate that. It's my profound admiration in your efforts. And uh, then the welcome you all. And uh, yeah, so as we did yesterday, uh, we will do a little bit of preliminary prayers through setting a proper motivation. And the proper motivation involves refuge field, visualizing refuge field, visualizing whether to the field, and remembering the purpose of the practice, purpose of this class here. And as for the refuge field, visualize Buddha Shakyamuni, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and particularly today, Habaptijan, the Buddha's descent, the sacred day of the Buddha's descent to the to the planet Earth from the 30, 33 heavens after having been there for three months, giving teachings to his uh, the, the reincarnation of his mother and uh, all the gods and goddesses there. And then today, in the land here in India, Sangasia, where the Buddha then descended, and um, yeah, then we descended to help him, come to help the sentient beings. So with this mind, given that this is a very auspicious day, whatever we do, the virtues really multiply. And I'm sure many of you attended just uh, the uh, like half an hour, an hour ago, uh, teaching by His Holiness the Dalai Lama, uh, related to the um, taking the aspect of Bodhisattva vow, and also, also, uh, question answers. So there, uh, the, I'm sure you took part in that. And uh, the somebody asked the audience as to the how can we make sure that in our next next lives we'll be able to take birth in the place where your your holiness is going to be. And then his holiness, um, the said very clearly that what we should do is finally keeping aside rituals, keeping aside the other things, um, practice bodhicitta, the practice wisdom of emptiness, wisdom of emptiness, which we are doing now, depending on the origination, practice that and generate a very strong aspiration, aspiration that, the, uh, that, that I be born in a place where His Holiness the Dalai Lama and other the great teachers the wherever they are uh, with their aspiration guarantees that you'll be the born there. This is what is so said. So what are we doing? This is really, really, really the, the greatest meaning, greatest meaning of our life. And uh, yeah, so with this in mind, just let us all rejoice in what we are doing today. And as I said earlier, I really appreciate Venerable Elizabeth, uh, Venerable Elizabeth's effort to bring us all together. And then it so coincide, it coincided with this uh, today, Habaptishan, and then the text, which is so precious, Rai Sitam Sutra. So with this in mind, visualizing all, the Buddha Shakyamuni, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and all the great enlightened beings, all my teachers, the Danish teachers, and the, the Lama Yeshe Rinpoche, Lama Soba Rinpoche, and all these teachers, and your own, all your teachers, all your personal teachers, just visualize all of them there, and visualize them as so loving, caring, affectionate, and embracing to you. And the body of the field, you visualize your two parents, you visualize all your family members, including your children, and all dear mother sentient beings uh, with you, leaving them aside. And the purpose of this class is to activate this incredibly precious Buddha nature within us. Um, activate that and be equipped with the, finally attain the state of fearlessness and the state of infinite happiness. 
And with these two confidence, confidence, then you embrace all the human sentient beings to liberate them from all fears and make them be endowed with the infinite happiness. So uh, that potential is within each one of us, irrespective of what your gender, what your ethnicity, what your the say the, the caste, creed, and so forth. Everybody has this uh, potential known as the Buddha nature. So the whole purpose is to awaken this Buddha nature by removing the mental defilements. And we really need to explore um, the how can we get into the mental defilements only by resorting to the very powerful remedies. So with this mind, uh, let's turn to, okay, let's turn to page three. If you have the hard, the hard copy, but in good page three, if not, uh, we have the screen sharing here. Uh, let us wholeheartedly recite this, let the words flow and let the meanings flow. So that's very important. And teach by great compassion. You taught that Makura Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. And teach by great compassion. You taught that Makura Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. And teach by great compassion. You taught that Makura Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I pay homage. Sanye Jiva Soge Chonam La Chanjo Pardo Sanye Kyasko Che Tage Chinsho Che Ponam Kukhe Trona Benche Sanye Jubare Cho Sanye Jiva Soge Chonam La Chanjo Pardo Sanye Kyasko Che Tage Chinsho Che Be Sonam Ke Trona Benche Sanye Jubare Cho Sanye Chodha Soge Chonam La Chanjo Pardo Tane Gyal Soche Tage Jin Soke Be Chonam Ke Dola Penjere Sanye Dubare Shoh I go for a few gentlemen enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha by my accumulations to the practice of giving and so forth may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for a few gentlemen enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha by my accumulation to the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulation to the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. In dependent origination, there is no ceasing, no arising, no annihilation, no permanence, no coming, no going, no separateness and no sameness. I prostrate to the consummate Buddha, the supreme among all teachers, the one who taught this peace, which is afraid of elaborations. I prostrate to the mothers of the hearers, the bodhisattvas, and the Buddhas, who through the knowledge of all leads hearers seeking pacification and complete peace, who through the knowledge of paths causes the souls have been migrated to achieve the ends of the world, and who through the possession of omniscience have subdued us expand a variety of teachings. The one who is transformed into the reliable guide, motivated by altruism to benefit sentient beings, the teacher, Sugata, protector, to you make prostrations. The one who has eliminated the web of conceptualizations and is endowed with the divine bodies of the vast and the profound, who attain the chance for the forever noble life race to you, the Buddha, make frustrations. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the mind of full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. Okay, let's recite this three times. Um, okay, first we read the meaning of the mantra first, and then we will recite the mantra. All phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of the causes as well is taught by the great seer. Om Yeh Dharma Hetu Prabhava Hetum Tesham Tathagato Yavatat Tesham Chayo Niroda Evam Vati Mahashramana Yeswaha Om Yeh Dharama Hetu Prabhavam Hetum Tesham Tathagato Yavatat Tesham Chayo Niroda Evam Vati Mahashramana Yeswaha Om Yeh Dharama Hetu Prabhavam 
Profound, peacefully, lavish, and free, clear line, non, -con non composite, such as the nectar that Dharma have discovered, finding no, no one who can fathom this teaching in silence or return to the words. Piona Trent's thought and expression is a professional wisdom, which is unborn, unseized, and has the nature of space. It's the object of apprehension of self realized wisdom to you, the mother of the Buddhas of the three times of your obeisance. All composite things are impermanent, all contaminated things are the nature of suffering. All phenomena of the nature of emptiness and selflessness, transcending sorrow is peace. A guru is the Buddha, a guru is the Dharma, likewise the guru is the Sangha, a guru is the source of everything wholesome, I go for refuge in the guru. By the sound of the vibrant drum of Dharma, you liberate all beings of miseries. I beseech you to kindly remain and give teachings until the end of the expense of billions of eons. The Buddha does not watch the negativities of beings, nor does he remove their miseries by his hands. His spiritual realizations are not transferred to them. It is by teaching the truth of the suchness that the beings are liberated. With full intents, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to chant loud of dharma for all bewildered miseries gloom. If you are attached to this life, you are not a spiritual practitioner. If you are attached to samsara, you have no renunciation. If you are attached to your own self-interest, you have no bodhicitta. If there is grasping, you do not have the view. Okay, Okay, let us recite this five times. And as we recite this mantra, so the uh, the meaning is very, uh, the, on the one hand, the meaning is symbol. Of course, if you go deeper, it's it requires a lot of um, the studies, extensive reflections, then you will gain conviction in the meaning of this mantra. Um, so what it says here is, Diyata, Diyata is, here is thus, here is thus. Um, the somebody, you are somebody who has pious to achieve the state of fearlessness, which is nirvana, state of infinite happiness, fearlessness conjoined with infinite happiness, which is Buddhahood. To achieve that, uh, to achieve that, this is how we have to follow by cleansing the mind, by undertaking an internal journey, a journey of cleansing the mind. And how is the cleanse the mind? Cleanse the mind through the wisdom of emptiness, driven by the force of bodhicitta, supported by renunciation, and the okay, supported by the great compassion, and on the ground of renunciation. So, and with this, how you proceed through is in the five steps: gade, gade, para gade, para samgade, bodhi swaha. Five steps indicating indicating the five paths: part of accumulation, part of preparation, part of seeing. Part of meditation and part of normal learning. So this, are, and then what these all these parts are, and how one moves from one to the second. These are all we have to study more. In other words, it's a process of cleansing your mind of the mental defilements. With that mind, let's recite this um, the uh, five times. <laughs> Paragati Parasamgati Bodhiswaha Tiyata Om Gati Gati Paragati Parasamgati Bodhiswaha Om Gati Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhiswaha Tiyata Om Gati Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhi Swaha Tiyata Om Gati Gati Paragati 
arasam gate bodhi swaha Please just some dinner. Please just some bite this today. I go for a few chubby gems. Yes. Okay, what do you do is that on this auspicious day, on this auspicious day of the um, Club of Tuition, page 50, page 50. Oh. Okay, do a middle table. Okay, what do you do is that uh, the, on this auspicious day, His Holiness this morning, um, the gives the opportunity for all for everybody to take part in this generating this bodhicitta. Finally, the seat of the, the seat of infinite infinite goodness, infinite joy, happiness for yourself, and the seat of infinite happiness to be provided to the other beings is generating this incredibly precious bodhicitta, the the altruistic mind to become Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings. So we're going to recite these three v verses wholeheartedly, and then the um, let us the uh, for information. The thing is that uh, in this life we're connected with the Dharma, the Dharma of the Nalanda tradition, uh, met with His Holiness the Dharma's teachings. We're very fortunate. And then, the, for example, say this uh, Salisthamba Sutra, the Rising Sutra. We're very fortunate. So meanwhile. What about our next lives? In case if we achieve the, uh, Buddhahood within this lifetime, well and good, but what about in case if not? Most likely, of course, this is a very the, a noble journey. Being a, extremely noble, meaningful, it'll take time. Nobler the goal, more the time it takes. So therefore, uh, for sure it'll take time unless until somebody really puts effort like the way just Milarepa but. Otherwise, you know, people like us will take many lifetimes to achieve Buddhahood. But then to make sure that in the next lives, um, the two things to keep in mind. One is that we should come in contact with Dharma, number one, come in contact. So they're brilliant, brilliant, brilliantly intelligent people, but they have not come across on the Dharma. And uh, what to do, number one. Once you connect with the Dharma, but it doesn't mean that you will wholeheartedly engage in it. We never, it's not guaranteed once you connect with the dharma so once first to see how we can connect to dharma once connected how to make sure that we don't waste our time instead take the maximum take the maximum uh, benefit out of this uh, they come in contact with the dharma for that matter uh, how to make it consistent number one consistent and rigorous number one is how to come in contact with dharma then number two is how to rigorously engage in it, not missing the opportunity. So to connect with Dharma, we should include very powerful prayers, number one. Now to rigorously engage in it, we have to practice the Dharma within this life as much as we can. So what are you doing here? Taking the aspiration Bodhisattva vow. And as I said earlier, to take the aspiration Bodhisattva vow, it is not necessary that you should, you have any form of commitments, no commitments as such. If at all you want to really have some commitments, the maximum commitment that you could think of is that from today onwards, I will try my best to render service, benefit, help to others. And if not, at least I'll not harm others. If this much, if you can make the commitment, you are eligible to take this action for a vow. So with this mind, I once again, Reinforce visualizing all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas in the space in front, of, in front of you. And also visualize your true parents, all the family members, children, and all sentient beings living on the side around you. And you are leading this, and all sentient beings are joining you. <clears throat> I go for refuge to the Triple Gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddhahood in my heart. I go for refuge to the Triple Gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddhahood in my heart. I go for refuge to the Triple Gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddhahood in my heart. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please pay heed to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the mind of Bodhicitta, and just as they successively dwelt in the Bodhisattva practices, likewise for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will gener generate the mind of Bodhicitta, and likewise shall I too successfully follow the Bodhisattva practices. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please pay heed to me. 
just as the previous Buddhas have generated the model Bodhicitta, and just as they successfully dwell in the Bodhisattva premises, likewise for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will gener generate the model Bodhicitta, and likewise shall I too successfully follow the Bodhisattva premises. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please be here to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the Mother Bodhicitta, and just as they successively dwell in the Bodhisattva premises, likewise for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will generate the Mother Bodhicitta, and likewise shall I too successfully follow the Bodhisattva premises. <clears throat> okay. Um, Continuation from where we left last time. I'm sure you have all the 12 links on the fingertips. I'm sure you have that. Yeah, I'm looking at your face to see if you have. Okay. Um, yes, most of you have it. Okay, good. Okay, so um, last time where we left was the touch exhibition you were. Okay. Um, very quickly, very quickly, um, we will read the text once more and where only when necessary, I'll explain it. Otherwise, the, um, those which we already did yesterday, uh, I may not go over again, only when necessary. Otherwise, just for particularly those people who come to, who join today, that you will demare sutra. Hmm. Uh, particularly, uh, the people who joined today uh, for them to uh, to um, the make it complete one them to make it complete um, as an auspicious indication uh, to make it complete we will just quickly read from the beginning very quickly and then where we left yesterday we will uh, go into detailed explanation please Okay. Okay. The Noble Mahana Sutra, Rise Seedling. So what happened was that the, the, the background is that the Buddha Shakyamuni at the at one point, the Buddha Shakyamuni was passing by rice the field, and the Buddha pointed his finger to the rice seedlings, meaning the rice shoots. Um, that monks, look at this. Whosoever sees dependent origination will see the Dharma. And whosoever sees the Dharma will see the Buddha. This is one, one thing the Buddha said. Then number two is that because this exists, that exists. Because this is produced, that is produced. Number two. Then number three, because of ignorance, contaminant commas arise. Because of contaminant commas, consciousness arises. Because of consciousness, name and form arises. And then the, the um, 12 links hole, and then number 10 becoming number 11, uh, the birth, and number 12, aging and death. So, and then the lamentation, bewilderment, and the heap of miseries ensue. And then the next part, because the ignorance ceases, the, the karma ceases, because of which the consciousness ceases because of which the name and form cease and then it keeps on like that and then the whole heap of miseries cease or stops. This is what the Buddha taught. Then, uh, so here as we are reading this, as we are reading this, um, as we are reading this, what we see is that the, um, so after this teaching, then the around the evening, the Buddha Shakyamuni ascended to the, the Vulture's Peak, Chagur Pumburi in Tibetan, Vulture's Peak in Chagur Pumburi uh, in um, Bihar, in India. And then what happened was that the, um, the, uh, the Buddha presided over the, the gathering. And then it was more like a very casual sitting around the Buddha. Then Shariputra, the Arhat Shariputra, he had it towards on the Arimatriya. And then the exchanging the courtesies, then I started to enter into conversation. And Sherubutra then very respectfully asked questions, questions to Arimantriya. So these are the important points. What are the questions asked by Sheriputra? So um, the Sheriputra reminded, reminded Arav, the Arimantriya that Venerable Sir, 
Uh, do you remember that the earlier, um, as the Buddha passed by the rice seedling, the Buddha said, whosoever sees dependent origination sees the Dhamma, whosoever sees the Dharma will see the Buddha. So what is dependent origination? What is the Dhamma? What is the Buddha? So this was a question asked. It's a very contemporary question. The question which today you know, is like we are talking. This is so beautiful. Okay, so let's, um, I'll quickly read this. The Noble Mind Sutra Rise Seedling, homage to all Buddhist Bodhisattvas. Thus have I heard at one time, the Bhagavan, the Buddha, was beside one vulture peak mountain, which is uh, Chagut Pumburi in Tibetan, in Rajgir, with the large Sangha of 1,250 bhikshus, meaning monks, and uh, full of din monks, and with a great many Bodhisattva Mahasattvas. Okay. Bodhisattva, Mahasattva. Oftentimes you will come across these two words coming together. Bodhisattva and Mahasattva. Bodhi is the awakening and Sattva is the courageous one. The courageous one, the person who is courageous one to achieve, to, to attain Buddhahood, to aspire Buddhahood for the benefit of sentient beings. Maha is a great Sattva. Maha means great. Sattva is again the courageous one, greatly courageous. The courageous one seeking Bodhi or full awakening and the greatest, greatly courageous one. Why these two are coming together? Why not only one? So the, this is important. This is what come, come across quite often in referring to the very uh, the advanced Bodhisattvas like uh, Shariputti, um, Aravalokiteshvara, Aramaitriya and so forth. So here uh, again we see that the, uh, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Maitriya so these are like the epithets for the, the great bodhisattvas. So bodhisattva means somebody who aspires to achieve enlightenment. And enlightenment, there are two kinds. Personal enlightenment and enlightenment for, the, for all beings. So personal enlightenment is what we call as nirvana. Nirvana, just for one to be liberated. And then the, um, the nirvana, for the, you say enlightenment for the benefit of all beings. That is Buddhahood. So the first one, Bodhisattva, means somebody who is courageous to aspire the Bodhi or enlightenment. And to, to distinguish this Bodhisattva from the Shravakas and Pradigabuddhas, Buddhas, those who seek personal liberation. So they're also courageous to aspire their own uh, the enlightenment. So to distinguish, to distinguish these Bodhisattvas from them, then the second word is said, that is Mahasattva. So this commentary is according to, this explanation is according to Acharya Kamal Shil. Acharya Kamal Shil, who said that Maha Safa, Maha, Maha means great. Great is not just for personal, but for the great scope, the great, the aspiration for the, the great in the context of the greatness of the, the beings on the basis of the, for whom this enlightenment is sought. Beings meaning infinite number of beings infinite being so this is so great and aspiration is so great and the purpose is so great and the enlightenment is so great the buddhahood is much much greater than the personal liberation and then the infinite beings is much much greater as compared to one person person then aspiration the bodhicitta is far far greater in terms of aspirations as compared to a personal liberation renunciation so it's so great mahasattva to make sure that they are distinguished from the Shravakas and Pradik Buddhas, Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Matriya. And after they had exchanged courtesies upon meeting each other, they both sat down on a flat rock. Aramatriya and Shariputra. Two of them sat them on a flat rock. Venerable Shariputra then said to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Matriya, Matriya, here today, the Bhagavan, the Buddha, gazing at a rice seedling, spoke this aphorism. Aphorism meaning, say, the, uh, like a maxim, like a statement. Aphorism uh, to the bhikshus. Bhikshus, whoever sees dependent arising, dependent arising, or the dependent origination, dependent arising and origination, it's just a matter of English translation. Sees the dharma. Whoever sees the dharma, sees the Buddha. Having said this, the Bhagavan fell silent. Matriya, What's the meaning of this aphorism spoken by the Sugada? Sugada meaning the Buddha, the one who has gone to the ultimate bliss, of the bliss of freedom from attachment, bliss of freedom from all the afflictions. What is, and the stains, what is dependent arising? What is the dharma? What is the Buddha? 
how does one see the dharma by seeing dependent? Look, it, the, the question is how nuanced uh, Shariputra was asking the questions. One, he was asking individually, dependent and arising, dharma and the Buddha. Then the second question is how they are linked to each other. How by seeing dependent origination, one sees the dharma. So linking the, uh, the, uh, the realization of dependent arising and realization of the dharma. And how does one see the Buddha by seeing the dharma, connecting the dharma with the Buddha. Okay, next. Oh, yeah. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Maitriya, then replied to the Venerable Sharitvati Putra. Sharitvati Putra is the Shariputra. Venerable Shariputra, you want to know what dependent arising is in the statement made by the Bhagavan, the Lord of Dharma, the Omniscient One. Lord of Dharma meaning the Buddha, the Omniscient One meaning the Buddha who knows all phenomena, the omniscient one with the omniscience. Bhikshus, who, whosoever sees dependent arising sees the Dharma, whosoever sees the Dharma sees the Buddha. Well, the phrase dependent arising means that because this exists, okay, because this exists, that exists, because this is produced, that is produced. That is to say, then go into detail. Ignorance causes formation, formation meaning formation is um, the, the contaminated karmas, referring to contaminated karmas. Ignorance causes formations. Formations cause consciousness. Consciousness causes name and form. Okay, the 12 links which we studied yesterday. Name and form ca cause the six sense sources. The six sense sources cause contact. Contact sources uh, causes feeding. Feeding causes craving. Craving causes appropriation. Appropriation or grasping. Same is a matter of translation. Appropriation or grasping. Appropriation causes becoming, number 10. Becoming causes birth, number 11. And the birth causes aging and death, number 12. And then the sorrow, lamentation, suffering, despair, and bewilderment. Thus does this entire great heap of suffering arise. So this is how we experience this suffering. What we are going through now is displayed in this and the, this teaching of dependent origination. How, um, say, the, the, because that exists, because this exists, that exists. Because this is produced, that is produced. And because of ignorance, and the formation is, the, is caused. Because of the formation, consciousness caused, and so forth. This is how we come into existence. We come into the samsaric existence. Then, then, if you're wise, we can also undo this suffering. How to undo this suffering? When ignorance ceases, formation ceases. When the formation ceases, consciousness ceases. When consciousness ceases, name and form ceases. When name and form ceases, the sixth sense sources ceases. When the sixth sense sources cease, contact ceases. When contact ceases, feeling ceases. When feeling ceases, craving ceases. When craving ceases, appropriation, number nine, ceases. When appropriation ceases, becoming, number 10, ceases. When becoming ceases, birth ceases, 11. When birth ceases, then aging and death. If you don't take birth in samsara, then you don't have to die. Aging and death stops. And the death, sorrow, lamentation, suffering, despair, and bewilderment uh, cease. And the bewilderment, this is one of the characteristics of samsara, where when we really go through uh, complications, agitations, tragedies, one of the other, then your mind gets confused. You really, your mind gets con confused. And in so the ability to see things in the nuanced form, in the say the, the subtleties in the complexities all simply uh, disappear so you just get, get confused bewilderment or confusion a uh, cease thus did this entire great heap of suffering cease this is what the bhagavan has called the dependent arising this is the meaning of dependent arising how we come to being um, into samsara that is and how we can say we undo the samsara, how we can free ourselves from the samsaric sickness, aging, death, tension, despair, and particularly the pains, the pains of the pain of losing near and dear ones, the pain of you dying, the pain of you becoming, you know, say the the of suffering, liquidation, the pain of you uh, contacting coronavirus COVID-19 and so forth. So all these pains can be undone. Um, okay, then the next one is, who is the Bhagavan Buddha, right? Okay, sorry, what is the Dharma? So having taught what dependent, still um, what is being explained thus far is very, um, the, say, uh, the a summary form, like the synopsis, and the detail is here to come. 
What is a dharma? So whosoever sees dependent origination will see the dharma. What is that dharma? Uh, dharma is so uh, the uh, say uh, the practices that we do, the practices that we do, and along with the results in simple terms, the practice that we do, and along with the results, what kind of practice, what kind of results that, that we achieve? It says the dharma is the eightfold path of the noble ones. What are the eightfold path? What is practice? Right view, right view to see the, or say the to see the reality, to see emptiness, to, to see dependent origination. Right thought, say these views that you have meditated upon, that you reflected, um, that then the say the the thoughts to express these, and then the thoughts, then the right speech. From these thoughts, then you your speech comes out to uh, share uh, your knowledge with others, and then right action, right action to make sure that what you're doing accords with the dharma. Then right livelihood, how you lead your life. It should not be a corrupted, stangled, the scandalous life, but it should be a very appropriate uh, the livelihood. Then right effort, right effort, the study, reflection, and meditation. And then right mindfulness to, to build the steadiness of the mind, right mindfulness. With this mindfulness, then the concentration is built, the right concentration. These eightfold, uh, eightfold path of the noble ones noble ones meaning the Arya beings noble ones combined with the attainment of its results now these efforts the in the eightfold noble path along with the results results in the form of say what we read earlier gade gade para gade para samgade bodhiswa you achieve the various results these results and then finally the bodhiswaha in the form of nirvana nirvana is the what the bhagavan has called the dharma this is the dharma then the whosoever sees dharma will see the buddha what does he mean by buddha who is the bhagavan buddha a buddha so called because of comprehending all dharmas meaning that there is somebody who sees all phenomena who knows all phenomena is endowed with the wisdom eye of the noble ones wisdom of the noble ones meaning that the are beings say we talk about gade gade Paragate, parasamgade, bodhisattva. What does it mean by Arya beings? Arya beings is not just, you know, it's not just a poetic uh, presentation. Uh, Arya being means those who reach the path of seeing, the third one, gade, gade, paragade, third level, paragade, when you reach the path of seeing, then you are referred to as the Arya beings. Arya meaning the superior beings. In what way you are superior? Superior in ways of seeing the reality directly. Ordinary people like us, in the first place, we don't see the reality, we see the illusion. And then the um, illusion, illusion as real. And whereas the other beings um, not only see the, the reality, the illusion is illusion, they see that directly. Because of this, they are known as the uh, having the having been to the having crossed the old the, uh, the path of seeing, seeing the reality directly. A uh, path of seeing and then part of meditation, part of normal learning. So these are the, the uh, known as the other beings or the noble ones. And the body of dharma, so the body of dharma in Tibetan is the chugu, chugu meaning somebody who has manifested, manifested the true form of yourself, manifests the ultimate form of yourself, which is the dharmakaya, body of dharma meaning dharmakaya. And thus perceives the dharmas of those still in training and those beyond training. And because of which um, this Buddha perceives, this Buddha cognizes all phenomena of, you know, uh, the, the the people who are in training training meaning gate gate para gate para samgate first form first four are in the training phase and then the beyond training that is bodhiswaha so um the for us we don't so we we cannot distinguish these beings or somebody who is very compassionate we say oh he's a buddha he's a bodhisattva right and what kind of bodhisattva which level right we never know we have no clue so all these fine distinctions is what the, the Buddha cognizes, what Buddha perceives. Okay, how does one see dependent arising? Okay, now, um, how does one see dependent arising? On this point, the Bhagavan said, one who sees dependent arising, okay, now these are going to be a little technical. Okay, this is going to be a little technical. For that matter, um, I'd like, um, like to give you a background. Once you get this background, then all we're going to read below will um, be easy for, for us. Otherwise, it'll become too technical. And uh, okay. 
Ready? Okay. Um, the idea is, I don't know whether we did it yesterday, the dream, coming out of the dream. Okay, so we, uh, yesterday we did this part that say, you go, to, you go to sleep and then you start dreaming. As you start dreaming, okay, first let's go to the gallery. I want to see all of you. Okay. Uh, let's say that how many of you in your life, you, you had the awareness, you had the awareness that, okay, now I'm falling asleep, now, okay, now I'm getting the indication that I'm going to sleep, I'm falling asleep, okay, now uh, they, I'm getting the indication that I'm, I start to dream, I can foresee that I'm going to dream, okay, how many of that experience, raise hands, very quick. Raise hands. Nobody. That's interesting. Okay, Olivia, Olivia, and Pawani. Where? Okay, Pawani, Shandila. Okay, Olivia, and then Maria, Maria Francois. Okay. Anybody who likes to share with us, what indications are there when you are okay? you find it so difficult not falling asleep and now you get some indication okay lucky now i'm there now i'm going to yeah now i'm falling asleep okay what indication did you have Raise sense very quickly we don't have much time i thought we had seven sessions and yesterday i realized that it was we had just had that we just have five sessions at two gone okay we have to do a little rush okay the subash niji professor subash niji Unmute. Unmute yourself. Unmute. Professor Subhash Niji, unmute. Give some unmute to him. Unmute yourself, Subhash Niji. No. Huh? Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? We cannot hear Subhash Niji. Anybody else? Okay, no one. Nobody wants to share. Okay, Mary. Mary Quick. Unmute. Uh, tu m'entends? Yes, Mary. Mm. <laughs> Oui, et, et euh, quand on commence à s'endormir, euh, on a euh, les, euh, ça apparaît comme des hologrammes. Donc, euh, c'est vide. Et puis, ces hologrammes, euh, pour aller vers le rêve, ces hologrammes, ils commencent à se remplir. Ça veut dire que, par exemple, euh, l'hologramme en haut, qui a la forme d'un homme, d'un humain, il commence à prendre... Euh, les habits, la tête et tout ça. Et puis, on rentre directement dedans euh, et puis on commence à voir la scène. Mais, oh. tu veux traduire? Ça commence comme des hologrammes. Ok, so, tu la translate. La, 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 uh, so, uh, Marie said that uh, when we begin to, to, uh, to sleep, then we, we see some kind of holograms, something like this in our minds. Then slowly, slowly, they, they begin to fill everything in our mind. Then, the, then the, it becomes more precise, etc., etc. Okay, very good. So these are the indicators. Anybody else? Anybody else? No. Okay, Laura, Hoge. Keshela, uh, when I am starting to fall asleep, I have noticed that the physical sensations seem to fall away. And it's uh, it, the sensations that start are more mental. Okay, physical sensations fall away. What do you mean by physical sensations? Tactile sensation or the the visual or hearing so forth? Um, it, tactile sensations, definitely. Uh, I think all the physical includes all the tactile, the hearing, the seeing. 
uh, all the physical sensations. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So the point is that um, yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, oui. Patrick. Oui, euh, c'est l'impression que je quitte le corps grossier pour devenir de plus en plus léger et commencer comme presque si je flottais. Well, Patrick says that it seems that uh, I'm leaving my gross body and like I'm, I'm floating some, somewhere as if I, my body is more subtle. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. Okay, good. So the, be observant, be observant, all of us. Okay, Mary Francois? Mary Francois, you love to say something? Uh, unmute. Me? Il m'arrive en rêvant de me rendre compte que je rêve et donc d'être plus attentive à ce qui se passe pendant le rêve. So it happens to Marie Francoise that sometimes when she dreams, she, she's aware that she's dreaming and she's more mindful in, within her, her dream. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. So the, um, we just see if you can observe and if you can be more observant of yourself um, when you're falling asleep, number one. Then you start to, start to have the dream, two. Just be more observant. You're getting it? Okay. Um, so with this in mind, what I'm saying is that when we go to, when you go to bed, you start fall asleep, then you start to have a dream. Um, let's say that in the dream, you have all the good things, bad things, have one after the other, one after the other. And sometimes they be some of the bad dreams, they just continue one after the other, one after the other, one after the other for like whole one hour. That's extremely tiring sometimes. And then you, you wake up, you go to look, come back, you fall asleep, again the dream continues. Yeah, this is what happens. And you, I'm sure many of you had that same experience. So let's say that the dream consists of like good dreams, bad dreams, good dreams, bad dreams, just in um, the, one, the, the, uh, the one stretch of a dream. One stretch of a dream, it consists, it, it constituted of the several the uh, the uh, the episodes good bad good bad very scary and very pleasant neutral again very scary pleasant so these dreams and uh, when you have the pleasant dreams and not only pleasant you're also virtuous you engage in helping others say seeing a poor dog a poor person you feed the person you talk to the person and sometimes you fight with the people Okay, all these things, virtues, non-virtues, neutral, virtues, non-virtues, neutral. So let's say that all this happening within a, just a, a one span of a, a dream. And um, if I ask you, if I ask you that, okay, when you're being, uh, let's say that when you are being the, uh, when you're fighting with somebody else in the dream, of course, this is not good. When you're being kind to somebody else, of course, this is good. But still it has, you know, uh, still there's a, the, something is wrong with this. Even the dream, you have been kind to somebody who is really hungry, thirsty, and uh, going through illness, so forth. you've been kind. That is virtuous, but still there's a little problem, right? There's a little problem. Okay, there's some, there's some mistake there. There's some problem there. It's not perfect. So what is that thing which is not perfect in the virtuous dream, a dream where you engage in virtue? Just quickly, raise hands. Anybody, what's the, the problem with that dream? Okay, Ruchita. Geshala, it's still a dream. It's not real. Okay, what's the problem? It is a dream. If it is a dream, what's the problem? Pawani? What's the problem if it is it's a dream? Not... What Ruchita said yeah. is that still it is a dream. Yes, we acknowledge yeah, that. it's a dream. But what's the problem? What's the problem if it is a dream? What's the problem? It's not reality. It's not something. Uh, this is what I'm saying. If it is not real, I know that it's not real. But what's the problem? This is my question. What in what way it bothers you? In what way it is not good for you? Anybody? This is the question. You're getting it. So how many of you want something which is not good for you? Raise hands. How many of you want something which is not good to you? 
ओके वाओ आई कैन सी यू वेल अपलियो सर आई कैन सी यू वेल ओके एनी हाउ मेनी यू डोंट वांट हाउ मेनी यू डोंट वांट समथिंग व्हिच इज नॉट गुड टू यू रेज हैंड्स of course all of us we don't want anything good to you you're getting it we don't want anything good to you okay so what i'm asking is even this virtuous dream where you're being so kind to help somebody who's hungry thirsty and so forth you give something to eat drink you talk nicely and you also feel very happy inside so with that dream even that dream has something which is not good What is that element which is not good? Raise hands. Or oh, Patrick? Patrick. Manque la motivation. The the motivation is missing. A motivation. Uh, what's the motivation? What should be the motivation? Okay. Anybody else? What's the problem with that? Okay, Patrick. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Isabel. Uh, il manque la le résultat. Uh, the the result is missing. Oh, the result is missing. Of course, the result is there. You feel happy, right? And then portrait, you have uh, the non, motivation. Uh, portrait, si you have the motivation because oh, si this person donne, hungry, hungry, suffering. I need to help. The motivation is there, and the result is there. When you help, you feel very happy. The result is there. Motivation, both are there. Anybody, very quick. Anybody was what there's something wrong there. Rosemary? Rosemary unmute. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Une hallucination le rêve. It's, the the dream is a, is an hallucination. What's the problem? It's a nice hallucination. <laughs> what's the problem? What's wrong with that? I'm asking what's wrong with it. You're getting it? Something which you don't like, Gulen, Guiem, Guiem, yes. Unmute, unmute, Guiem, unmute, yes, Guiem, you. Gul, Gal, I say Guiem or Guiem. Some people pronounce it Guiem. Unmute, unmute, unmute. Oui. Yes. En fait, il manque l'intention. It uh, the intention is missing. Okay, intention is the intention to help the person is there, right? Okay, anybody? Okay, Justin Wolski. Justin Wolski, yes. Uh, peut-être la volonté. On peut pas. Uh, on peut pas agir comme on le souhaite. Enfin, il y a souvent des situations dans lesquelles on est impuissant. <laughs> on aimerait bien faire quelque chose. On n'y arrive pas. The free will is missing because in some occasions we would like to do something that we we cannot do. Oh, okay. So there, there are many dreams where you like to do something but it doesn't happen. But here in this particular dream, where the person you see the person suffering, hungry, and you have the intention, motivation to help, and you use the free will to go and give the food. You use the free will. You have the free will. Okay. I want to make. I want somebody to tell me, Bruno. Bruno Pinel. Unmute. 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 We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. Unmute. At uh, the Jimbala, you can ask her to unmute. Voilà, ça y est, ça y est, ça y est, il est fait. Ben, je pense qu'il manque la, la conscience de ne pas pouvoir aider, mais qu'il manque, euh, qu'il y a l'ignorance que c'est un rêve, que ce n'est pas une, ce n'est pas une réalité, c'est un rêve. Et le rêve, il y a l'ignorance, l'ignorance de la, de la, de, de la non interdépendance, de la non connaissance de l'interdépendance. So there, there is a kind of ignorance in the dream within the dream. We, we ignore uh, uh, interdependence. No, so you know, you see, that if I give food, by dependence on giving food, this person's removal of hunger will originate, dependent origination. And once the removal of hunger of the person, by dependence on that, my happiness will originate. 
so you're following you don't deny the uh, dependent origination that's amazing okay anybody no one okay yeah uh, kesang jolkarla unmute kesang um Mr. I think when you're trying to do good uh, to someone in your dream, but the person is not there, it's just imagination that the person is missing. Okay, the, I cannot hear you too well. It's a little, what is that? The sound is um, a little hazy. Can you repeat it? The person is not there. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh -huh. So your intention is there and your action is there, but the reality is that the person is not there, whoever you're trying to do. Okay, so what's the problem? If the person is not there, what's the problem? In what way it is not good for you? Um, do, 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 so the, the point is that it is, not, it is not good for me. You know, something is there which is not good for me. What is that thing? Yes? Unmute. Uh, I think... Uh, in dream, we feel like it's the reality. That's yes. the problem. It's not okay. the reality in. The okay, seeing the dream as real, and it doesn't tell you with the fact. It doesn't mm -hmm. tell you the fact. But what's what your problem, <laughs> right? Sometimes uh, we deliberately go to the movies to watch movies, knowing that it's not fact. Still, so you enjoy it, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so this is a very serious question. If you understand this, okay, we have this young girl, Pooja's, um, the younger sister. Hmm. Yes. The dream will end. A dream will end. That's good. So, the, yeah, if the dream ends, yeah, the dream ends. And the pleasant dream ends is a little sad. That's true. I agree with you. What's your name? Prithvi. Huh? Prithvi. Is Ritui. it Prithvi? Huh? Prithvi. Ritui. Ritui, Ritui. Okay. Thank you, Ritvi. Thank you. Okay, Kim Lui. Kim Lui. Um, I will give it a shot. Is it because, you know, it's nice, so you feel happy, but you know it won't last. You're going to you are going the dream is going to you're going to come out of it it's like wow okay so the, these two <laughs> ritui and kim loi you came with the same answer at the same time that's amazing so ritui said the dream will come to the end and kim loi is saying that dream right. is impermanent it will end and then you know um okay let's say the juice this juice if i drink it too much it harms me it's not good but I drink it now, it's good, and it'll end, and it's not a problem for me. It's not a problem. It ends, no problem. But I agree with you, uh, the Kim Lui and uh, the Ritvi, both of you, that when you see something which is so nice coming to an end, then you feel the, say, the, the feeling of what I call uh, the nostalgia and then reminiscence. Uh, all these feelings come to you. That's true. I agree with you. That's true. I agree with you. Okay. Now, anybody else? Okay. The Maria Francois. Mary Francois. Unmute. Unmute. Voilà. Le rêve ressemble à un film, à des images d'un film qui se déroule. Nous sommes spectateurs, mais pas créateurs. So the dream is like a movie that is uh, that is, uh, uh, and we are not the we are just this, uh, we are just uh, how do you say witness, but we are not the creator of that. Okay, that's okay. close. Uh, Mary Francois, that's close. Thank you. That's close. Okay, very close. Okay. Now, Mary. Yes, Mary. Le problème est, est, est que on veut faire quelque chose de, de vertu, comme on a vu, comme on a dit, 
mais on n'arrive pas à, à accomplir euh, euh, complètement et correctement son action. Il y a toujours quelque chose qui, euh, qui cloche là, on ne sait pas pourquoi. Qui vient clocher, oui. But there is a something which impede our path of action to be complete. Uh, we, we don't control. Mais quel est le problème? Uh -oh. What's the problem? Jimbala, what's the problem? Le, le problème est qu'on ne, uh, ne maîtrise pas. We have no control. That's the problem. Okay, very good. So the two Marys, the two Marys, Dans, the, your answer is similar. Dans le... Oh. En fait, on ne peut pas agir sur la matière. Si on donne à boire un chien en rêve, le chien ne boit pas vraiment. In the dream, we cannot really act on matter. If we give uh, water to a dog, the dog do, do, doesn't really uh, drink. OK, it doesn't matter, but you are happy. <laughs> you are happy. You're getting it, you are happy. OK, maybe the last, Charles. Charles? Le problème, c'est qu'on manque de contrôle. On n'est pas sous contrôle. So, as uh, Marie said, we have no control. We, we, ah. we are not aware. We are not, we, we, we miss the control. Okay, so now, uh, let me go back to the main point. Thank you, the two Mary and Charles. Okay, let's say that what, they has, what three of them said, uh, let, me, uh, let me paraphrase it here. Uh, for that matter, okay, how many of you like to have um, the uh, dream where on the uh, where on Hub of Tijin today, the Buddha's on the auspicious day where the Buddha descended, uh, then His Holiness um, invites you for a cup of tea. You have the audience with His Holiness, then His Holiness invites you for a cup of tea. Okay, how many of you, how many of you like to have this dream? Raise your hands. All of us, very good. My next question to you. How many of you will have this dream tonight? How many of you will have this dream tonight? Raise hands. Okay, no one, <laughs> no one. Why not? Why not? This is a very pleasant dream. It's an amazing dream. Why not? Why not are you gonna have it tonight? Why not are you have gonna have, have tonight? Just one person, raise hands. I'll give chance to one. Okay, Kim Loy. Kim Loy. Okay. It's probable that we can wake up. Oh, sorry. All right. Okay, sorry. Okay, now who is that? Kim Loy. You want to give Kim Loy and Kim Loy is William. Uh, William, you better. Uh, Shela is uh, me. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, you can't make it happen, even though you want it. It's out of okay, your control. You can't make it happen. Okay, yeah, let us not forget what uh, the, what's your name? William. 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 Okay. Um, what William said, let's not forget it. Okay. That you want it, but you can't make it happen. And Roger, you want to say something? Roger? Roger, yes. I just want to say that the most of our time, we spend most of our time to sleep all the time, but the next morning we don't remember anything. Et la conscience a malgré tout vécu des expériences. It can happen that even if our consciousness had the experience to dream, when we wake up, most of the time we forget. Okay, that dream. Uh, that's also true. Sometimes we forget the dreams. When you have the dream, dream, then the uh, the next time we can we can forget it. It's not only the, even the real thing. Also, what I what I ate last yesterday, I forgot it. <laughs> right, <laughs> my memory is terribly the. Um, the broken down. So my memory is terrible. I just forget. If you ask me, what did you eat last the, the yesterday? Yesterday afternoon, I have no memory. Dream, non-dream is the same. Okay. So with this, what I'm saying is that, let me say this again. So you all, we all like to have this very pleasant dream where you go to audience with his holiness, then his holiness invites you for a cup of tea. That's beautiful. But we cannot. But the problem is that we cannot say, but okay, I'll have this pleasant dream tonight. Nobody says this because 
We want this to happen, but we cannot make it happen. We don't have the control. We cannot control the dream. You're getting it? So, which means the dream happens for some other reasons, not because of your control. You do not have the control, which means that you don't have the freedom to choose the dream. You don't have the, the freedom to choose the dream. In, in other words, you, there is a total lack of freedom. Lack of freedom is misery. You're getting it? Lack of freedom is misery. Okay, keep this in mind. Now with this, the good thing about the dream, the good thing about the dream is that, let's say that the, okay, you are very healthy. You are not uh, COVID positive. You're not COVID positive. And in the dream, you dream that uh, the, you were tested positive, COVID positive. And you just go into so much of the tension, fear, so far, right? And then the, in the dream, the doctor comes, gives you paracetamol, all the treatments, ventilator and everything. In about like seven days, you are okay. Your COVID disappeared. You wake up, right? You do not have a COVID at all in the first place. So in the dream, you, you, you dreamt that you contacted COVID-19. In the dream, you see the doctor coming, helping you. In the dream, you recovered from COVID-19. You're getting it? In reality, you wake up, you realize that no COVID-19 entered me, no COVID-19 was removed. You're getting it? You got it? This is so important concept. Okay, with this in mind, let's turn to the text. The dream concept. This is so important. With this, then you'll understand all we're going to read from the Noble Mind Sutra now. Okay. Um, what we were reading was, how does one see dependent arising? This is where we are reading. So it says that, um, okay, on this point, the Bhagavan, once, the, the Bhagavan, the Buddha said, one who sees dependent and arising as constant. As constant meaning that the, uh, that the, um, that the reality, that we are like in the dream, the way somebody said that in the dream, um, they say you did something, but when you wake up, okay, somebody said it, that you were giving food to the person and then the person hunger removed and you feel so happy. You wake up, you realize that that person was not really there. You're getting it? So what was all happening in the dream, they were not really there. That is very constant, very stable. This reality which is so stable. Constant here means the reality that what is happening in the dream is not real. Not being a real is very constant. You're getting it? Not being a real is the, the, is the very constant. Is yeah, this is the this was the the, the the truth, paramount truth. Okay, without life force. So same dream person, same dream person, this person who you are thinking that you are helping, this person does not really have uh, the life force. It's not a real person. That's not without life force meaning somebody who does not have life. Then the devoid of life force. The first one is without life force. Second one is devoid of life force. Devoid of life force, it means, it means that although this person doesn't have the life, the person is not a real person, but another person in the dream affects this person. Is not being, it's devoid of somebody affecting this person. Devoid of life force. And true, true meaning that the fact that this person is not, not real is true. You're getting it? Okay, these are a little technical. Um, they, I can't really spend too much on each of these. We have only three more sessions, right? And, of, and the, there are many more texts remaining. So I'll just explain it and you do it fast or later on you can, uh, you can revisit this, uh, the recording. Uh, true. And unmistaken, unmistaken means that how, how you know that this person doesn't have the life force. Is on, it's not a re real person, which is the true real, which is a fact, can be proven through unmistaken reasons. Unmistaken here means unmistaken reasons. With unmistaken reason, you can prove that. Okay. Then 
unborn, unborn meaning that this person in the dream, the dream person is not really born as a real person, unborn. Okay, not a reason, meaning that, okay, now it is not born, but in the past, it arose or it originated as a person. No, it was not a reason, not, not a reason in the past, not a reason in the past. Okay, uncreated. Although there's no person there as born, the dream person there as being born as a real person, but then there should be somebody else who is creating this as a person. No. In other words, there is no external agent to make this dream person as a real person. There's no. Uncompounded. Then, okay, now it did not happen in the past. Then uh, there's no life force from within, from itself, no an external agent creating it, but then it may be like, you know, the causes and the conditions. For example, two, two parents come together and then the, I'll say the, for the conception to happen in the mother's womb, the two parents come together and the, the mind from the previous life come there, three factors come together, then the, the beings are created. So like this, this dream person, the dream person, can be also because of these factors come into being and that dream person becomes a real person. That's also not true. Uncompounded, meaning um, the dream person becoming true person through the power of being compounded by the causes and conditions. That's also not. Unobstructed. Unobstructed meaning that this reality, this reality that it is unborn, that is not real, that is not real, it pervades across time and space. It's not just, you know, in only in some, some space within the dream is unreal, but the rest of part of the dream that the dream person comes as a real. This is not true. In every way in the dream, space and in time, uh, that this person, the dream person is not a real person, is a true. Unobstructed means it pervades all, all in time and space. Imper imperceptible. So because that this person, the dream person is not real, you say with the with the pure perception, with say so ordinary people like us, we see the dream person is real, but with a pure perception, you will see that the dream person to be a real person cannot be perceived. Imperceptible, tranquil. So say the dream person, very complicated person in the dream. Okay, how many of you in your life you have and they encountered encountered? With a very complicated people, extremely complicated, extremely complicated, right? <laughs> okay, Chimbala, okay, Bhavani, and then who else? Who else? Okay, uh, the Olivia. Okay, some people they are scared. If I say yes, then <laughs> they have complicated person create more problem on me, <laughs> right? Okay, there are some very complicated people, extremely complicated. Maybe yeah, we are the ones who are complicated. We never know. You're getting it. I think that somebody else is complicated. That person may be thinking that I'm complicated one, right? Okay, sometimes I get letters from some of my friends, you know, who say it's so difficult to work with you, <laughs> right? So I can't really blame others. They are seeing me as complicated. So we never know. Okay, what I'm saying is that some people, they're very complicated. Same. And they, if you give juice, if you give juice, the person said, who told you that I'm doing juice, right? Who told you that I want juice? If you don't give juice or if you don't do anything, that you are so selfish, you're drinking yourself, you're not giving anything to me. If you go give something, then say, who told you? <laughs> it's very complicated, extremely complicated, complicated people are there. Okay, so even these complicated people, so that, these complicated people, not only really complicated people, in the dream you can see meet with people who are very complicated. They're just dream. You're getting it? Just, just dream, not the real. So it says that, say, imperceptive, tranquil. So when you say that, oh, this complicated person in the dream, it's just my dream. You feel the tranquility. You're getting it? You can feel the peace. Okay. Fearless. Fearless. The fearless. When you see that, the... Um, Okay, this is important. So all these things, what we are talking about, the person, seeing the dream person is real. So it's not just a dream. It's not just a dream. It's not just a dream. The people that you encounter with, yourself as a person, 
people around you, they're all like dream, right? They're all like dream. They're all coming from your subject, not from the object. The dream is coming from your mind, not from the object. Just likewise, everything in this universe, they all come from the subject, not from the object. But on the contrary, when you look at this flower, when you look at the flower, when you see anything else, we see them as coming from the object. That is deception. That is what we see the dream as real. You're getting it? That is what we see the dream as real. So with this in mind, um, with this in mind, uh, say now the fearless, the fearless, the fearless is that first, first at first when we get a glimpse of emptiness, uh, you get a feeling of fear at first, at first. And then when your experience deepens, when your experience deepens, then the fear dissolves, fear dissolves, and the fearlessness will replace this fear. One. Number two, all our fears are grounded, by, grounded to the self-grasping ignorance. Ignorance. So with the wisdom to see the dream as dream, so dream is not real, that everything is like a dream, that is the wisdom. So the wisdom counteracts the ignorance, and because of which, the ignorance which supports the fear dissolves. So that experience of the dreamlike nature of phenomena helps us to create fearlessness, the fearless. Then the next D is the incontrovertible. Incontrovertible meaning that, uh, for example, I see, I ask you, I ask you, what is this? You say, this is a flower. This is a flower. And I say that, no, this is a human being. Right? Okay. I ask you, what is in my, guess what is in my hand? You may say, a chocolate. I say, no. Then you may, you may ask me, what is this? I may say, this is a, there, it's a, it's um, um, the, okay, it's a flower, a dry flower in my, a dry flower in my hand. And then Charles says that, are you sure? I said, no, no, it's not a dry flower, it's a leaf. And then Miss, okay, I thought it was flower. But when you see directly with your eyes, what is this? You say that this flower, I said, no, this is a chocolate. You say 100% not, you're getting it? So this is incontrovertible. When you see directly, nothing can change your conviction. So seeing everything like a dream directly, nobody can change it. So this is known as incontrovertible. Okay, not exhaustible. Not exhaustible meaning that, okay, it has several connotations. So one, which is uh, the most common one, is that, say the, um, say, um, negative emotions, mental defilements are to be exhausted, to be exhausted. And then uh, say the, okay, at the moment we have this, we are so rich with the mental defilements. And with, we put effort in the marriage emptiness, bodhicitta, and so forth. Then the mental defilements, you know, started to exhaust. And eventually when you become Buddha, all the mental defilements exhaust completely. But in the dream, the, what we said earlier, that first you had the, you had COVID-19, you were tested positive, COVID-19, the, uh, the virus. Then say after treatment, then the COVID-19 exhausts. You wake up. That exhaustion of the COVID-19 was just dream. It was not really exhausted, right? To exhaust means something was there before. Because in the dream, the COVID, COVID uh, positive in the dream was not real. So in the first place, in the dream, there was not a real COVID positive there. What you see is that as getting exhausted, this is just a dream. It's not true. So this is known as um, they're not exhaustible. And by nature, never stilled, very similar. By nature, never stilled. We say that, okay, what is your mental state now? What is your mental state now? It is like a very placid, very calm on the ocean, very serene ocean, or like the turbulent ocean with the turbulent waves on it. Our mind is very much like a turbulent wave on the ocean. How many agree with me? Raise hands. 
How many agree with me? Okay, most of us agree with me. Okay. Most of us agree with me that our mind is like the ocean with the turbulent wave on the surface. Just, and if you want to know, if you want to know really how your mind is really in a mess, so much disturbance, if you get a glimpse of emptiness, if you get a glimpse of emptiness, you'll feel the contrast between our normal mind, which is so in disturbance, versus you see the emptiness, the mind stills. This disturbance stills. You can see the contrast. Then you will realize, oh, oh since until the reality of emptiness, I see that my mind was constantly in this disturbance. I did not know that. Now I could see the acute stillness. You're getting it? Okay, let's see the contrast. Acute disturbance with the acute stillness. So the, in the dream, in the dream, you see the person with acute disturbance and they suddenly, with the marriage emptiness, the stillness. So that again, you wake up, you see that this stillness is, they, they say, never, by nature, never still. It is not that earlier it was not stilled, now it becomes stilled. No, this is not true. This is not true. You're getting it? Never, ne by nature, never stilled, meaning, stilled from non-stilled non-stilled state to the still state that's not the case because it has been stilled right from the beginning it's not that it the it, it transpired as stilled from the state of the non-still okay so okay uh, the point is that we're all like in the dream right my question to you when are you affected by the dream? In the dream of, or outside the dream? Raise your hands, very quick. Raise your hand. When are you affected by the dream? In the dream or outside the dream? Jimbala is expert, I know. Maria is expert. Anybody? Anybody? Okay, Subhash Niji. When are you affected? Unmute. Unmute, Subhash Niji. Subhash Niji, you have to unmute. Okay. I have a yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Sometimes when I get up and I remember the dream, then I am upset. Okay. Uh, for you, you are affected by the dream. You are affected by the dream inside and outside the dream both. No, especially when it's a vivid dream and I get up just before the, if I have it, just before I get up, then naturally I'm affected by it. Okay, this is what I'm saying. In the dream, if a tiger comes to attack Subhash Niji, are you happy or are you affected or not affected? In the dream. While you are in the dream, a tiger comes to attack you, are you that affected? That I don't, I'm not aware of, Keshela. No, no, I don't know what, I'm, what I'm feeling in the dream, but when I'm out of the dream, I know what I'm feeling. Okay, did you ever have a nightmare in your life? Yeah, I have. Okay, like, can you give an example? At the moment, I can't think of, but I had a horrid boss, and she would. Okay, let's say in the dream, your boss, your boss says that, Sebastian, why are you late? You're getting it, you are fired. No, no, if she this, could not fire me. No, no, listen, listen. If this is what you dreamt, so when you, in the dream, are you affected or not affected? I'm not so aware of that, Gishela. That's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. So you're not aware that you had night dream? You had, you had nightmare? No, that I'm aware of. But oh, what you, because you're not aware of? The dream, in the nightmare, okay, I don't. Thank you, Subhajini. Thank you. Anybody else? You know, when are you affected by the dream? In the dream or outside the dream? Okay, the Ritvi. Inside the dream? In the dream, yes, <laughs> that's true. When you are in the dream, the tiger comes to, you know, attack you, you're affected. Then the moment you wake up, you sigh with relief. <sighs> it's not real, I'm so lucky. You're getting it? You are not affected by the dream, when you're out the, outside the dream, when you're in the dream, you're affected. You feel that as real, you're getting it? Okay, 
So now the point is that um, the, okay, say the outside the dream, that dream, when you are outside the dream, that dream, dream tiger can never attack you. You're getting it? You were never attacked. You are never attacked. You will never be attacked by the dream tiger when you are outside the dream. You're getting it? So therefore, your mind outside the dream, your mind was never disturbed by the mental defilements. Your mind was forever still not being affected by the dream mental defilements in the past. Is not affecting you by the dream mental defilements now. Will not affect you by the dream defilements in the future. You're getting it? So your mind is totally in the form of still, still with respect to the dream defilements. In other words, all the defilements we have now, they are like the dream defilements. And who will not be affected? Are you affected or not affected? Anybody, you are, are you affected by your, your mental defilements or not? Isabel, you affected? Yes, Kim Louie, you affected? Okay, how many of you are not affected by your mental defilements right now? Raise your hands. How many of you are not affected? How many of you are affected by the mental defilements right now? Okay, we're affected. That's true. If you are not affected and still coming to the teaching, you come, you're coming here to test me. You're getting it? If you're not affected, which means that you're Buddha already. A, a Buddha coming into the teaching is just to test me, not because of to listen to the teaching. You're getting it? Okay, we are affected. We're affected, which means we're in the dream. We're still in the dream. We are in the dream. And dream, there are two kinds. Dream, there are two kinds. One is the conventional dream, and the other one is unconventional dream. We can wake up from the conventional dream every day, but we never wake up from the unconventional dream. We are always in the unconventional dream. So this mental defilement, which, we, which affects us, the mental defilements which affect us, they are the, the, the dream mental defilements of which dream? Unconventional dream. So just as you, you, we wake up from the conventional dream, it is for us to wake up from the unconventional dream so that these mental defilements will not affect us anymore. You're getting it? Because the mental defilement, our mind, our mind, from the, point of view, from the point of view of waking up from the unconventional dream, our mind is still, is in the state of still, right from the beginning. You don't have to still it. You don't have to still it. The only thing is that we have to wake up. And how to wake up? Wake up by seeing, the, by seeing the reality as it is, that it is like a dream. Okay, so what we are reading is, the by nature never stills, the third line. By nature, never stills. Okay, this is meaning that if you come to realize that what we what is going now is a the unconventional dream, then you will not be affected by these mental defilements. If this not affected by mental defilements, if you realize that these mental defilements they don't have the power to disturb me, so therefore I don't disturb me in a true sense. So I don't have to put effort to still it because it is already stilled. From right from the beginning. So uh, by nature, never stilled, never uh, put effort to be stilled from the state of non-stilled. And who likewise sees the dharma to also be constant. Okay, so now this is about uh, the one of these dependent, dependent arising. This is dependent arising. Dependent arising should be seen in these attributes. Now the dharma, next is dependent arising, dharma, and the Buddha. So now the Buddha said that the Dharma, likewise, Tashkita. Oh, this one Tashkita. Likewise, likewise, Tashkita. Okay. Likewise, um, sees the Dharma. Sees the Dharma to also be constant without life force. Okay, same. Without life force, devoid of life force, true, unmistaken, unborn, not, not arisen, uncreated, uncompounded, unobstructed imperceptible, tranquil, fearless, incontrovertible, inexhaustible, and never stilled, clearly understands the dharma of the noble one. So if you realize the dharma in the form of these characteristics, then we, this is the true understanding of the dharma 
of the noble ones of the other beings. And by thus acquiring such right knowledge, sees that if you see things like this, you are waking up. You're waking up. You're waking. You have to wake up from which dream? Anybody? Get a little tether. Which dream? Raise hands. To see that, to see all these characteristics that which we have studied now, you have to wake up. Wake up from which dream? Wake up from the dream. Which dream? Anybody? Very quick. Very quick. Raise hand. Raise hands. Kelsanla. Kelsanla. Unmute. Yes, not all. Yes. Unconventional dream. Thank you. From the unconventional dream, right? Okay. Um, when you when have you been having this unconventional dream? Since when? Anybody? Since when? Since when, when? did you have this unconventional dream? Raise hands. Since when? Okay, Virginie Connet. Since we were born. Okay, since we are born, since we are born, what about last life? Last life, you are awakened again. You went to sleep. Ah, yes. No. Yes. Okay. No. From the beginning, I don't from know. Beginning. From the, it's no from, beginning. So okay, from, it, from the beginning, <laughs> from the uh, the beginning, from the beginning, from the beginningless time, the time we call as the beginningless time, right? Yes. From the beginning. Okay. Thank you. So now. Say the conventional dream, we wake up every day. But the unconventional dream, we never woke up from this unconventional dream. We need to wake up. How many of you don't want suffering? Raise your hands. How many don't want suffering? You are fed up with suffering. Raise your hands. Okay, very good. If you, if you really don't want suffering, okay, by the way, who's that? Who is that who doesn't want suffering? Boys or the girls? Uh, boys or girls? Both. Uh, both. Both. What about the religious and non-religious people? Uh, both. What about the, the French and non-French? Both. Raise hands. French and non-French. Both. Okay. Very good. Educated and uneducated. Both. Raise hands. Okay. Buddhist, non-Buddhist. Both. Raise hands. That's true. If you don't want, whosoever does not want suffering, doesn't want suffering, you have to wake up from the sleep of ignorance. From the sleep of ignorance, from the dream of ignorance, from the unconventional dream. You're getting it? How to wake up from this unconventional dream? To know that everything is coming from the subject, nothing is from the object. Right? It is for this reason that the Buddha is revered as the fully awakened one. You're getting it? Buddha is referred to as the referred to as the fully awakened one, where he is freed from all he's freed from being affected by anything of the conventionalities. He's freed from all these. Okay. So it's for this reason that we have to wake up from the sleep of ignorance and all the other Dharma activities like making prostration, doing pujas, rising, reciting mantras, all these things are ways and means to help us to activate this wisdom, to see the reality as it is, to see the reality that everything comes from my mind. For, for that matter, um, it's so important that the, um, the, the path, the paths that take us to Buddhahood, the paths are classified into two, the ripening paths and the liberating paths. It is only the wisdom of emptiness that is the liberating path, and all others are the ripening paths. Ripening path meaning which help us ripen this wisdom of emptiness. So what actually liberates us from samsara is the wisdom of emptiness. So this is where this two sutra is so precious for us. Okay, let's continue reading this. <clears throat> okay. Uh, why is it called dependent arising? It is called dependent arising because it is causal. Okay, now, now we are going to end the not too technical, not too technical, but there's something that we have to pay attention to. Why is it called dependent arising, right? Why is that this phenomenon where objectively nothing is there like dream, subjectively everything is there? Why is that known as dependent arising? 
it is called a benign arising because it is causal and conditional so causal dependent arising and conditional dependent arising two what is causal what is conditional uh, they, this is going to be explained in more detail now <clears throat> um in this connection the bhagavan the buddha concisely what is in this connection, the Bhagavan concisely taught the characteristics of dependent arising as follows. Results come from their own specific conditions. Results come from their own specific conditions, meaning that the 12 links which we studied last time, we talked about the three kinds of dependent origination. The first one, which is the causal dependent origination dependent origination where the results come into being by depends on the causes so the first causal dependent origination is the one which governs the whole universe whole universe is governed by the uh, the causal dependent origination so what is that causal dependent origination um, the bhagavan concisely taught the characteristics uh, the uh, follow results come from their own specific conditions causal conditions okay what is that reality that results come to being by depends on cause and conditions. Is it dictated by the Buddha? Is it created by the Buddha? No, this is reality. Buddha only discovered this. Buddha did not invent this. Buddha discovered the three layers of dependent origination. He did not invent the three levels, layers of dependent origination. So the Buddha Shakyamuni appeared 2,600 years ago. But this dependent origination was operating since way before buddha shakyamuni was born way before the buddha even became buddha so this whole universe was operating on the basis of the cause and effect relationship this is something which exists even before the buddha shakyamuni before the buddhas our results come, come from their own specific conditions whether the tathagata, tathagata meaning the buddhas whether the buddhas appear or not whether the buddhas exist or not this true nature of things cause and effect will remain it is the true nature the constancy of dharma, the immutability of dharma, constancy meaning that, that this is always the, the case, cause and effect operating. The immutability of the dharma, this will never change. Uh, consistent with dependent arising, suchness, unmistaken suchness, not partial suchness, actuality, the truth, unmistaken and unerring. This reality on uh, cause and effect, cause and effect, this the um, the dependent origin is cause if a cause and effect this is the say the this is consistent with dependent arising suchness this is the reality an unmistaken suchness this is something which the nobody can prove it to be mistaken and not partial suchness this is not like okay this holds true in uh, the france it doesn't hold true outside france right for example say the the lane which lane is correct right lane or the left lane is correct in france you follow one rule in other countries they follow another rule whereas cause and effect okay cause and effect operates operates in the same way wherever you go it's not partial in nature um actuality and this is the truth this is what we can um the verify actuality and the truth unmistaken and unerring Moreover, dependent arising emerges from two principles. Okay, now this little, uh, it's not difficult, it's a little technical, we should pay attention. Moreover, dependent arising emerges from two principles. Okay, what we learned is dependent origination of the, say, the causal and conditional. What is causal, what is conditional, still not yet explained fully. I'll, we will have to study more here. And then now, it's talking, what is the causal, um, the moreover dependent arising emerges from two principles. From what two principles? From a causal relation and a conditional relation. Furthermore, it should be understood as twofold, outer and inner. Okay, you may you feel a little lost here. Don't worry. I will um, I will try to make it simple here. So outer and inner first. Outer dependent origination and the inner dependent origination. Within outer, there's causal and conditional. Within inner, causal and conditional. You got it? Okay, Mare. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Um, let me say this again. 
um, the dependent origination, we, we see four terms here, four terms. One is causal, causal relation and conditional relation, causal and conditional. Then another two is, a set of two is inner and outer. You're getting it? So let me explain. First, inner and outer. What does it mean by inner? Inner meaning the beings. Inner meaning the beings and outer meaning the, the place in which the beings uh, live like the pan earth and then the plants the flowers all the other things all the other dependent origin all the other the the composite phenomena other than the the person so the person is the inner and the rest of the i'll say the impermanent phenomena or the composite phenomena they are known as the outer so within the inner again there are two causal and conditional what is causal let's say that Okay, so for example, on the, um, okay, causal and conditional. So me as a being, me as a human being, and the cat as an animal, and then the, say the honey goes, helping so far. So for, for example, say the water, I have a solid body, the cat and the other animals also have the solid body, right? The solidity is created by the plant, the, the, by the earth, and then the cohesion of this, but the, the, the particles together by the element of water and the, say the, when you eat food, the food gets digested because of the fire. So these are common to the human beings, animals, insects and so forth. This is common to all. But there's something which is unique to the human beings, unique to the animals for say the 12 links. 12 links, what, made, what, means, what, may, what makes me as a human being? What makes you as a human being? What makes somebody else as an animal? What makes somebody else as God and goddess? So that is determined by the different, uh, say the, uh, the, the causes. The causes. Uh, conditions are common between the human beings and non-human beings. You're getting it? Okay. Let's say that earth, water, fire, air, space. So these are the conditions common to all. These are known as, uh, what is common to all is known as conditions. What is unique? to the human beings and animals so forth these are known as referred to as the causes here otherwise technically speaking cause and uh, cause and condition mean the same technically speaking these two mean the same but here the distinction is made so in this context the condition means something which is common to me you animals cats uh, so forth a uh, cause means something unique of the humans unique of the animals and so forth what is unique of me unique of you so that unique of me is my 12 links of dependent origination. You're getting it? Your uniqueness is your 12 links of dependent. That is a causal. And whereas the, I, need, I need earth, water, fire, air to you know, sustain myself. These are common to you, me, everybody. These are the conditions. This is for the internal. Internal causes means 12 links of dependent origination. And internal conditions means water, earth, the earth, water, fire, air, space, and consciousness. Or the, yeah, so this one thing. And then the outer, outer meaning, the outer things like the pen earth, the, the plants, um, and so forth. So the plants, the plants also have causes and conditions. The plants also have, for example, uh, say the, the mango tree. Mango tree, say the causes, it's the unique seed. The unique seed of this unique seed the unique seed is a cause and then they say with this unique seed then the, the other things other elements are required and then whereas the say the um the for this for the same plant for the same plant again earth water fire air what we spoke about them uh say the, the conditions they're also there required as conditions there so it also has a cause in the form of the unique seed and the other things as conditions. So inner dependent origination, outer dependent origination. Each of them have again two things, causal inner dependent origination, conditional inner dependent origination. For the outer, causal outer dependent origination, and the, what is that? Conditional outer dependent origination. Okay, these are gonna be the, the, we're going to read them um, the, very clearly from the following passages. Okay, we'll stop here for today. But not today for this session okay we'll come back the next session okay <clears throat> mm -hmm.
गदे गदे पार गते पार संगते बोधि स्वाहत ओम गते गते पार गते पार संगते बोधि स्वाहत ओम गते गते पार गते पार संगते बोधि स्वाह Okay, see you again. Thank you, Keshila.